everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to make a graph in Google Sheets. So um, you need to start with a data table. And sometimes the data table that you would turn into your teacher is not necessarily the same sort of data table setup that you need to make a graph with. When you're making a graph, you need your independent variable in that very first column of the data table and your dependent variable here. You also want to make sure that your, um, let's show you what I just did there. See how the word, the whole word independent variable doesn't show. I just put my mouse in between the A and the B and you see how I get that double arrow. Now I can drag it so I can see the whole word. I'm going to do that again here to make the box a little bigger. So, so let's say I have recently done an experiment where I was looking at the height of a ramp and how far a ball will roll after it leaves the ramp. And so a couple of things that a student might want to fix on this data table is that right now the numbers are not centered. So how I would fix that is I would highlight the boxes and then right here I can center the boxes. Okay. Another thing that is currently missing is we don't have units. So I recommend that you put the units up here in the heading. So maybe this was in meters. Because what will happen is if you write meters each after each of these numbers, when I go to make the graph, it will not work. It will not be able to do it. So you want to make sure you just have your units in the heading. Okay, so I have my independent variable in the first column and my dependent variable in the second column. That's the ideal situation for making a graph. If there are many other columns, oops, many other columns in between, you're going to have to adjust your data table to just be independent variable and dependent variable in order to make the graph. So what I'm going to do is highlight only the boxes that I've written in, and I will go to insert chart. Okay. So you will notice because I highlighted these boxes that had headings already in them, it auto filled the headings in here. Um, it sets it up as a, you know, independent variable versus the dependent variable, which is decent. It's not an ideal title. I would prefer it said the relationship between blank and blank or the effect of blank on blank. Okay, so that's a nice title. All right, so it looks like it automatically made a uh, scatter plot, but I can change that in setup. If it does not automatically give you a scatter plot, for most of the time in science class, this is what you want. Looks like these polka dots here. And the reason we want that and not one of the other graphs is because very often we're trying to determine if there is a pattern and if there is a relationship. And so using a scatter plot is going to help us to determine if there is a pattern. I do want a line here. But I don't want it to just be a connect the dot line. I want it to be a trend line. So if I go to series and I open this up, you'll see how I can now pick a trend line. And now it'll be easy to tell like, okay, yeah, they seem to increase at a steady amount, but not perfectly. Okay, so um, that would be something I could talk about in my conclusion. Okay, a couple other things that we should fix up here is that we put capital letters in to the title. And then if you are under chart title and axis and having the drop down menu of title, 
we want to probably center that text okay, to make it look a little bit prettier. So please watch this video here about what to do if I have a much bigger data table with a lot more information on it and I'm not really sure what it is that I need to graph. Um, in most cases, you just want the independent variable, what I, the scientist, change compared to the dependent variable, the data that depended on what I changed. So I hope this helps. Have a great rest of your day. Please give a thumbs up if this helped you to understand how to make a graph in Sheets.